Well, today should be interesting because we have a three-hour delay. And the schedule for a three-hour delay gives us nine-minute class periods, first through third. Then they hop up to 29-minute periods, fourth through eighth, with a 25-minute lunch. So that's a strange schedule. Now, the work we have for tomorrow is chapter eight. So let's go find it. We should be on the third slide. If you're not, go watch my older videos for hints about how to do those. But if we open the slides, and some of you still aren't doing this, we press the square arrow to get it into slides. Then we can see that the third slide is taking notes. These notes come from the book. So I'm going to split screen. I'm going to go find the book. This red document, this PDF, is the book. So the first part comes from, well, this page isn't so helpful. Uh, yeah, no, it kind of does it. We need to know the meaning of the names of the different parts or eras of life. So in the Paleozoic, we're going to find the meaning. So where is it? Paleozoic era, Greek word meaning ancient life. So here we would put ancient life. Then we would look for when it started and ended. So, oops, we don't want to do that. Back arrow, I made a mistake. So for start date, it began 540 million years ago and ended 248 million years ago. To figure out how long it lasted, you'll have to do subtraction. That's not too hard either. This is the hardest part, dominant forms of life. So things that were dominant. We can say fish were dominant. We can say animals with backbones like amphibians were dominant. Plants started to be dominant, but strange plants. So we get plants like club mosses and giant ferns the size of trees. And we get a lot of creepy crawly animals. So the first organisms on land were the plants. We had a question about that. But the um, first living things on land were plants. So the first organisms were blah, 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 insects, then followed by amphibians, and the first organisms were plants because the plants were much tougher and could survive the UV ray exposure. And so that limited things. The insects came out before the amphibians because they had a thick shell to protect them from UV rays. So they didn't need as much ozone between them and the sun to be able to live on land. So dominant forms of life are in the paragraphs and the pictures. And we just go on to the next one. What does Mesozoic mean? And when does it start and end time? Well, there it is. Middle life, 248. This is deceptive. It lasted about 183 million years. So in this one, they're showing you how long it lasted for Mesozoic. You don't have to do the math, but you do have to read down lower to figure out when it ended. And it ended 65 million years ago. See, there it is. So just because you see two numbers doesn't mean they're what you need. 248 is when it started. It ended 65 million years ago. And in between, they did the math for you. It lasted about 183 million years. Dominant forms of life, the types of plants that are dominant change. This is the dinosaur time. And even though the first birds show up, they're not dominant at this time period. So... We get flowering plants, but they're not dominant. Cone-bearing seed plants, so I take that to mean pine trees, are dominant. For Cenozoic, again, we have numbers. They don't give you two. It began 65 million years ago, and it means recent life. There's no end time because it's still going on. So it ended, well, zero million years ago. So this is the time of mammals and birds and flowers flowering plants, um, things that had appeared during the Mesozoic time 
are now becoming dominant. Insects are kind of a tag team with flowering plants, so there's way more than two things you could pick. We also have three more names from section three. So we have Prosimian. A lot of them start on page 190, I believe. So Prosimian means before monkeys. Prosimians are like these lemurs. They're much simpler than monkeys. They lack some of the traits monkeys have. So before monkeys, their name is telling you that they existed before monkeys. Uh, interesting characteristic about the prosimians. They're mouse-like mammals, and they're active at night, and they generally live in trees and eat insects. For the Australopithecine, the next one, its name in quotation means southern, Australo, like Australia, literally means southern land. So southern man-ape, Pithecine means man-ape. Why did they get that name? Because they had some traits in common with humans and some in common with apes. So it was bipedal, more like a human. Its brain was bigger than an ape, but still a lot smaller than our brains. And it had really long arms like an ape, but it could also, like we said, stand up as evidenced by fossilized footprints found of the same age in the same region, but also as evidenced by their body structure. Then we have Homo habilis. Homo habilis, we have to check the picture, is handyman. Habilis means hand. Why was it called handyman? Because it used stone tools. That's its big fact. It was one of the first humanoid ancestors or hominids to use crude stone tools. So there are many other hominids that we could talk about, but we don't need to. Now, if all those notes are confusing, there's a different place to get those notes. So if we split screen with the internet and my website, I've basically done some of the work for you. Chapter 8 notes, view only. So if I press that, that's a Google Drive document. It's thinking about it. It might even open. There we go. It has a lot of the answers already filled in. So I can split screen this with my slides. And there I am, nice enough, doing half the work for you. So I've got the meaning of the names. I've got the times and dates. What I haven't done is notable facts or dominant life forms. And I haven't done the subtraction. So started minus ended gives you how long something lasted. These numbers are abbreviations for MYA or millions of years ago. They're big numbers. And if those giant pieces of time are confusing to you, there's a great video about that, about how huge time actually is. Wow, internet, there we go. So right at the top of my page, the impossible hugeness of deep time is a video that tries to highlight how much history has existed on the Earth. We have that weird schedule tomorrow. Um, you can Zoom. You don't need to. It's a pretty easy day. Obviously, if you're behind, you should go and work on the questions you need to. So if you haven't started Chapter 8, well, then you probably need to go to Slide 1. If you haven't started Chapter 2, go to Slide 2. But it's five questions a day. We've got some easy notes to take. Look at me. I bumped everything over. It's not a hard day. Um, Zoom if you gotta. Email me if you need to. Wednesday, we're going to finish the last slide. Slide four, which is from Chapter 8, Section 3. Thursday, we're going to do a reading and a writing. And all of these things end up on the third marking period. Because this bulk, these four slides, aren't due until Friday. For those of you who got a little behind, you have a little bit of extra time. I encourage you to use this day to keep working. Um, some of you don't work much on days when we're not together, and that's really going to affect you because Friday is kind of our last day to get grades taken care of because Monday when we're back together, I have to submit grades for the second marking period, and we will have barely any time to fix anything. So hopefully you've been working Good luck, and I hope to see you in Zoom or in person on Monday.